The Daisy Lab program will accompany us from now on. It is a superb work platform, a fully equipped laboratory for measurement and development, by means of which practically all systems of measurement and control can be constructed. The school version is completely functional and can input and output real analog and digital signals via a sound card or the parallel interface. General skills in the use of Microsoft Windows are important for handling the program. And now, the first exercise with Daisy Lab. Restrict yourself in the first instance to the above two modules, generator and chart. That is the screen of an oscilloscope. Let us try to produce a noise signal and make it visible. Please observe now the following steps. Any module can be installed either by clicking the corresponding icon on the module bar or by choosing it from the modules menu. Place the mouse pointer on this module bar icon. It represents a generator module. Click the icon with the left mouse button and place it with another click on the left mouse button on the worksheet. A menu opens up and you see a selection of different generator modules. Click the standard module at the top. In the same way choose a chart module. You have now integrated these two modules into your worksheet. Their symbols appear in the work area. The two modules must now be connected so that the data can be transferred between them. To connect them, simply move the mouse pointer to the output of the generator. Press the left mouse button and move the cursor to the input of the chart module, keeping the mouse button down. When you release the mouse button, you see the green connecting wire between output and input. To show you a simpler means, please click the green connection twice with the right button. The connection disappears. To connect them again, simply move the mouse pointer to the chart module and drag the module symbol to the generator module symbol, keeping the left mouse button pressed until the output and input symbols touch. When you release the mouse button, Daisy Lab will automatically connect the two modules and route the wire. When you install a module from the display group of the modules menu, here the chart module, an additional icon will appear at the bottom of the screen. With a double click on this icon, you open the screen which will show the signals. With a double click on the module, you always open the module menu. Now you can select the parameter of the wanted signal. Here is the first trick. If the signal is to be represented perfectly and completely on the screen, choose Auto Scaling. A click on the start button and you see the system in action. Familiarize yourself carefully with the way Daisy Lab functions. Any questions will be thoroughly explained under the menu option Help. And all the components, modules, are described in detail. Put other signals on the screen 
by setting the signal generator appropriately. Form of signal, amplitude, frequency, phase, by a double click on the component. Do a bit of experimenting to familiarize yourself with the possible settings. Try the screen menu to magnify an excerpt by means of the lens. Then reverse this representation. Switch on the cursor. You will see two vertical lines on the screen. At the same time a further display window opens in which the chronological position of the two lines is given in figures. Now move the cursor lines. Measure instantaneous values, the time interval between them and so on. Put the screen with the time interval of the signal into the Windows clipboard and print out the picture as a document. Exercise 2 shows the visualization of measurement data. The visualization of measurement data and signal processes is the most important aid in this manuscript for understanding signal processes. DaisyLab provides many different visualization methods for measurement data and signal processes. First create the system illustrated by means of various visualization components. See above. Try to design the size and position of the displays as on the screen. Select a sinusoidal signal with the frequency F equals 0.2 Hz. Now start the system and watch all the displays for some time. Try to find out which measurement data refer to the analog instrument, the digital instrument or the bar chart. Try to see the correlation between the development of the signal on the screen of the plotter and the measurement data on the list. F equals 0.2 Hertz. At what intervals are the spot measurements of the signal recorded or stored? How high is the so-called sample rate with which samples of the course of the signal are taken? For what kind of measurements are analog, digital instrument and bar graph suitable? What measurement from a whole block sequence of measurements do they reproduce? Which of the display instruments most clearly provides the readings which the computer could then process. Find out how to set the block format and the scanning frequency in the menu AD. What exactly do these two quantities indicate? Set a block format of 1024 and also a sampling rate of 1024 for all further experiments. How long does a recording of a measurement sequence of a block take 
And how many readings does it consist of? Lissa Jew figures. Try to create the circuit illustrated representing the so called Lissa Jew figures. Use sinusoidal signals in each case. At what frequencies do you get a stationary picture? And at what frequencies a picture which rotates more slowly? or more quickly. Try by means of specific experiments to find out what this piece of equipment or measuring instrument could be used for. This example has an important background. What is a practical benefit? Perhaps you have a presentiment if you look closer at the following example. We have been able to visualize now a measuring instrument that shows a tiny detuning of frequency. The size of this detuning can be determined exactly from the time of one circulation, which is a special form of period length. In telecommunications, transmitter and receiver can only work perfectly together if they are synchronized, which means locked.